With the cessation of the transatlantic slave trade and the global abolition of slavery, Europeans faced the loss of what they deemed a valuable asset, a ready source of labor and access to wealth in the Caribbean and Africa. The prosperity of these European powers had been largely built on the backs of African slaves, whom they subjugated and dehumanized based on the color of their skin. As this brutal trade came to an end, there was a fear of regression among the Europeans. However, rather than passively witnessing the potential decline, these powers pursued a new avenue of exploitation, colonization. The scramble for Africa, occurring in the late 19th century, marked a period during which European nations aggressively sought to colonize and control vast swathes of territory across the African continent. Motivated by economic, political, and strategic interests, European powers embarked on this quest to secure valuable resources, expand markets, and assert geopolitical dominance. Africa's abundant natural resources, including minerals like gold and diamonds, as well as agricultural products such as rubber and cocoa, were particularly enticing for industrializing Europe. Italy, although a latecomer to this colonial race in the 1880s, sought to establish its presence in Africa, albeit with limited success. With aspirations to join the ranks of powerful European nations and demonstrate its dominance, Italy focused its efforts on territories like Ethiopia and Somalia. Employing brutal tactics, Italy aimed to assert control over weaker populations and solidify its colonial holdings. In this video, we embark on a journey into the shadows of history to uncover the tragic stories of suffering inflicted upon African nations by Italy's imperial ambitions. We delve deep into the troubling history, shedding light on the atrocities committed by a nation intent on exploitation and domination. Before we delve into the narrative, please ensure to like and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on our enlightening content. The Addis Ababa massacre, occurring on February 19, 1937, stands as a grim testament to Italy's ruthless pursuit of power. Italian forces, led by General Rodolfo Graziani, launched a merciless assault on the Ethiopian capital, Addis Ababa, in response to an assassination attempt on Graziani's life. This massacre was part of Italy's broader attempt to conquer and subjugate Ethiopia, which had fiercely resisted European colonization. The First Italo-Ethiopian War, culminating in the Battle of Adwa in 1896, saw Ethiopia successfully repel Italian aggression. Despite being outnumbered and outgunned, Emperor Menelik II of Ethiopia marshaled a diverse and determined force to decisively defeat the Italian invaders. The battle marked a significant victory for Ethiopia and served as a testament to their resilience and military prowess in the face of colonial aggression. The Battle of Adwa culminated in a decisive victory for Ethiopia, inflicting heavy casualties on Italian forces and compelling their retreat from Ethiopian soil. This defeat dealt a significant blow to Italy's imperial aspirations in Africa, leading to the signing of the Treaty of Addis Ababa in October 1896. Under this treaty, Italy formally acknowledged Ethiopia's sovereignty, preserving the Ethiopian Empire's independence. It stood as a rare triumph against European colonial powers during the era of imperialism and bolstered Ethiopia's position as a symbol of African resistance to foreign subjugation. However, the humiliating defeat at the Battle of Adwa fueled Italy's thirst for revenge, setting the stage for the outbreak of the Second Italo-Ethiopian War, also known as the Abyssinian War, in 1935. Under the rule of Benito Mussolini and the fascist regime, Italy unleashed overwhelming military force and advanced weaponry in its quest to conquer and expand its colonial empire in Africa. During this conflict, Italy wielded modern military technology, including machine guns, artillery, tanks, and aircraft, giving them a considerable advantage over Ethiopian fighters armed with outdated weapons like spears and swords. Moreover, Italy resorted to egregious tactics, such as the use of chemical weapons prohibited by international agreements like the Geneva Protocol of 1925. Mustard gas and other toxic gases were deployed against Ethiopian soldiers and civilians, resulting in widespread suffering, casualties, and long-term health repercussions. Italian forces also engaged in indiscriminate aerial bombardments of civilian areas, causing extensive damage and loss of life among noncombatants. Additionally, reprisals against Ethiopian civilians were common responses to resistance, leading to mass killings, looting, and the destruction of villages. Despite facing overwhelming odds, Ethiopian forces displayed remarkable bravery and resilience, resorting to guerrilla warfare tactics and continuing to resist Italian occupation across the country. However, after committing various war crimes and leveraging its superior military power, Italy finally succeeded in conquering Ethiopia in December 1936, establishing it as a colony under the name Italian East Africa. 
Marshal Rodolfo Graziani, the Marquis of Nigeli and Viceroy of Italian East Africa, led the Italian forces to victory over Ethiopia. Despite gaining control over Italian East Africa, Graziani harbored deep mistrust toward the local population. This mistrust was evident when he narrowly escaped a potential assassination attempt during a public event in February 1937, showcasing the underlying tensions between the colonizers and the colonized. The event, involving two young Ethiopians named Abraha Debak and Muggs Abdom, marked a desperate act of resistance against Italian rule. In a bold move, they hurled grenades during a public ceremony attended by Graziani, symbolizing their defiance against Italian oppression. This courageous act, though ultimately unsuccessful, demonstrated the enduring spirit of Ethiopian resistance against colonial domination. During the aftermath of the attack, casualties included Abuna himself and the vice-governor-general, Armand Petty. General Alo Leota of the Air Force and the Viceroy himself suffered injuries. One grenade exploded near the Viceroy, sending 365 fragments into his body. Graziani underwent immediate surgery at the Italian hospital, narrowly escaping death, while General Leota lost his leg due to the severity of the attack. Abraha and Mogus initially sought refuge at the ancient monastery of Deb Libanos but soon fled in search of sanctuary in Anglo Egyptian Sudan. However, suspicions arose among the local inhabitants in Gojum, leading to their tragic murder. Adipus, who had escorted them to the monastery, returned to Addis Ababa but was later arrested by fascist authorities and tortured to death. In response to the attempted assassination, Italian forces unleashed a brutal crackdown in Addis Ababa. Italian carbineers indiscriminately fired into crowds, resulting in numerous casualties among the impoverished assembled for the arms distribution. Guido Cortes, the federal secretary, even fired his revolver at Ethiopian dignitaries. Subsequently, Italian forces were given carte blanche by Cortes to unleash terror upon Ethiopians. Over the next three days, Italian troops rampaged through the city, killing thousands with daggers and trench weapons while shouting slogans of Italian civilization. They set fire to native homes, looted Greek and Armenian residences, and lynched their servants. The merciless violence culminated in the deaths of between 1,400 and 30,000 Ethiopians in Addis Ababa alone. This massacre, commemorated annually on Yekata 12, serves as a grim reminder of Italian aggression. The Italian response extended further with the summary execution of 62 Ethiopian intellectuals, marking a systematic attempt to quash resistance. Thousands of Ethiopians were sent to detention camps at Danan and Nakra, where they endured appalling conditions. Many perished due to disease, malnutrition, and harsh labor conditions. In May, the Graziani massacre saw the slaughter of monks and civilians at Deborah Libanos, further illustrating the brutal repression inflicted by Italian forces. Post-war Italy largely ignored its colonial atrocities, with few historians daring to confront this dark chapter. Angelo De Loca emerged as a pioneering figure in Italian colonial studies, unearthing suppressed war crimes. Despite facing backlash and threats, De Loca persisted in shedding light on Italy's colonial legacy, challenging the nation's collective amnesia. Access to state archives, crucial for anti-colonial historians like Del Boca, was tightly controlled, hindering efforts to uncover truths about the African campaign. Even in the late 1970s, progressive scholars faced denial of access to these sources, impeding the revelation of past wrongdoings. This lack of transparency contributed to a romanticized portrayal of Italians in Africa, whitewashing their faults and crimes. Despite enduring suffering and loss, Ethiopia received no official apology from Italy for colonial crimes, including the Addis Ababa massacre, highlighting unresolved historical wounds. Italy's failure to confront its colonial legacy perpetuates historical injustice. Denial and downplaying of atrocities hinder acknowledgement of the true extent of colonization's impact. Moreover, the absence of sustained international pressure allows Italy to evade accountability, leaving historical wounds unhealed. The colonization of Somalia by Italy was marked by brutality, exploitation, and the erosion of cultural heritage. Beginning in the late 19th century, Italy aggressively expanded into Somali territories, met with fierce resistance. The Italian conquest resembled a colonial enterprise reminiscent of the East India Company, driven by a ruthless pursuit of dominance. Resistance against Italian encroachment, notably in Warwick and Marca, resulted in brutal reprisals, with many Somalis losing their lives. The conflict escalated, drawing support from various clans and religious leaders, including Sheikh Abdi Abkar Gafal. The Battle of Tunley in 1907, although deemed a triumph by Italians, showcased the resilience of Somali resistance. 
Despite intermittent victories, Italian conquest of urban centers continued, leaving the Somali people vulnerable to further aggression. The Banadar coalition, under Sheikh Abdi Abkar Gafel's leadership, remained a primary opposition force, yet the absence of a unified Somali front rendered them susceptible to continued Italian rule. Under the fascist regime of Benito Mussolini, any form of resistance was swiftly met with organized opposition from religious scholars and students. Despite the resilient efforts of Somali resistance, Italy eventually subdued opposition through a combination of military might and ruthless tactics. Utilizing modern weaponry and scorched earth policies, Italian forces gained supremacy, leading to the establishment of colonial rule in Somalia by the early 1920s. Italian colonization inflicted a heavy toll on the Somali people, forcing them to adopt Italian language, culture, and governance, eroding their traditional way of life. Thousands of Somalis endured forced labor under harsh conditions, leading to widespread disease, malnutrition, and exhaustion. The village of Kalia in Lower Shebel stands as a stark reminder of this suffering where thousands perished while toiling for Italian projects. Italy's occupation of Somalia also entailed the conscription of over 6,000 Somalis into conflicts, resulting in significant loss of life and showcasing the exploitative nature of colonial rule. Moreover, Italian authorities systematically dismantled Somalia's traditional governance systems, erasing centuries of history and cultural identity embodied in entities like the Gedi Empire and Gadi Kingdom. The imposition of Italian culture marginalized Somali traditions, languages, and economic systems, leading to a decline in prosperity and self-sufficiency. Mogadishu, by 1935, had transformed into a vital naval base for Italy, reflecting Mussolini's ambition to consolidate Italy's colonial empire in Africa. Mussolini justified his invasion of Ethiopia by claiming to liberate Somali territories, launching the southern front of the Second Italo-Abyssinian War from Italian Somali land in October 1935, with over 40,000 Somali troops participating. Joined by over 80,000 Italian soldiers at the start of the offensive, these Somali troops, many of whom were veterans from Italian Libya, played a crucial role. Mogadishu served as a pivotal supply base during the conflict. After the war's conclusion in June 1936, Italian Somali land became part of Italian East Africa, forming the Somalia Governorate alongside Ethiopia and Eritrea. An Arch of Triumph was erected in Mogadishu to commemorate this victory. However, it wasn't until 1960 that Somalia gained independence from Italy, becoming a sovereign nation. Today, Italy's silence regarding its colonial past in Ethiopia and Somalia speaks volumes about its reluctance to confront the suffering, exploitation, and poverty inflicted upon the Ethiopian and Somali people. Rather than addressing this dark chapter in its history, Italy seems to prefer burying uncomfortable truths. As we conclude this video, we invite you to share your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share our videos to spread awareness about the truths of history. Thank you for watching.